All right, it is time for a new series. And ever since we did the Fred Divna Made in Britain series, y'all have been crying out for Guy Martin proper how Britain worked. I'm so here for this. Hell yeah, me too, man. It's the first episode is right up my alley or right on my track, I should say. The railway. Hey, I'm loving I like since we had him on our channel, right? But since we first heard, or at least I first heard of Guy Martin, yeah, this, oh, this yeah. has been in the comments. So I'm just excited to see what this is. Oh, me too. Every, all, only really stuff that we've done from Guy Martin is his uh, TT lap and yep. the Closer to the Edge doc, which was yep. pretty much where he got his start in terms of TV presenting and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can't wait. He's possibly one of the most relatable people out there. For, just, from that doc, he's yep. definitely the everyman. Yep. So I'm here for this, dude. Me too. Before we get in, if you're new here, we're Embrace the Suck 21. Yes, we are. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and... Become part of the community, not just the channel, guys. There's a big difference. Heck yeah. Ready to go in? Let's do it, man. All right. Three, two, one. Guy Martin is a third-generation lorry mechanic from Lincolnshire. Started on lawnmowers at six-year-old. And then 12-year-old moved on to trucks. Used to bike to work to go work with my dad. Could not get to work fast enough. I'm still the same now, eh? He's also a world famous motorcycle racer who loves the dangers of competing on the roads. As a mechanic, trick as you like. He's fascinated by the era when British workers and extraordinary feats of engineering made this country great the Industrial Revolution. That's when we was like the leaders in the world. Money. By no one, really. We was the boys, weren't we? So, in this series, he's going to find out how we did it by getting stuck into six major restoration projects around the UK. Wow. All right. He'll have to work like the grafters of the past. It was the normal thing to be doing 12, 14, 15 hour days, that's all. And I think, yeah, that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. He'll follow in their footsteps to learn about their way of life <laughs> and the dangers they faced. Put <laughs> some heat off that. Day in, day out, thought we were getting killed. Risky business. We've got it cushy now, haven't we? If it wasn't for those boys, what, 150 odd years ago, we wouldn't be in the position that we're in now. We can't I'm forget what this. those boys did, <laughs> can we? This is how Britain worked. Oh my god, dude. This already has oh. my stamp of approval, <laughs> and I'm gonna guess that it has your stamp. Oh of my god, I'm gonna effing love this dude. dude mm -hmm. So he's getting involved. Like this is I I I was kind of sort of scared that it was gonna be too similar to the the Dibna. And I was like, okay, they're gonna do it justice, they're gonna have their own spin on it. The fact that he's getting involved, yeah, is their spin. And I'm here for it. Me too, man. I like it's, that. I, I could just tell, like, he's already the dude that's, you know, works with his hands. And he's just a salt of the yeah. earth. Like, yeah. We figured that out. And that's just oh, yeah. remind. This is just reminding me of that. Even just this little intro here. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think we got us a good one on our yep. hands. Yep. Guy's first project is all about the single greatest machine ever built by British workers. A machine that changed the country and the world they lived in. The steam train. Listen to that, Lord. Hey. Listen to that. Sure. Money couldn't buy that, could it? Not really. I like that. I do like that. He's going to help overhaul this worn-out tank engine. It was a sort of humble workhorse that by the end of the 19th century was helping carry more than one billion passengers a year. Oh, wow. When Damn. fares could be bought for little more than a penny a mile. That's cheap. Look at her. 5164. She's no fancy names are out. Quite a tech and bat, really. 
Yeah, she's looking a bit sorry for herself, really. You know, half of, it, half of it's missing, you know, no pistons, no wild gear. Yeah, there's a bit of work to do. Well, a lot of work to do, really. The thing's, yeah, she's knackered. She's knackered. So, yeah. Yeah, we've got to get grafting, really. What do you automatically think of when you see a, 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 a train like that? Oh, Fred. I was just Fred or Thomas. Yeah, I was gonna say Thomas the Tank oh, Engine. Oh, <laughs> okay, cool. But then again, Fred, yeah, with uh, yeah. with this uh, mentality of uh, old school, uh, what made Britain great, uh, yeah. make it better now. Yeah. Oh my God, I love this. All right, <laughs> let's do Which, it. I just want to oh. say, like, I was like, it's kind of disappointing that the railway is in not only Britain but all of Europe and pretty much the rest of the world completely shit on the united states's rail system which is more geared towards freight and only passenger train we have is amtrak which prices are almost comparable to riding a plane yeah. but a lot slower so yeah. that's it's crazy it's crazy well i feel like the i don't know i don't know i feel like they reached needing to send things to other countries a lot faster than we did. Yeah. Right. And everything is reachable by, by land. Whereas, you know, we, we got our train tracks, right. But we perfected our, we got our ports ready first. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Cause we knew we had to ship out the shit. Mm -hmm. And so. we pioneered air, air travel. Yeah. So, Probably answered that question there. 5164's home is the Seven Valley Railway in rural Shropshire. Once part of Brunel's famous Great Western Railway, today just a 16 mile stretch survives, thanks to a group of volunteers. It's a popular tourist attraction and in desperate need of more locomotives. In 1880, there were a staggering 13,500 steam engines, but almost all have been left to rust in peace. Mm. The vast majority were condemned to train graveyards like this. Only around 150 working examples survive, and bringing one more back to fully working order will be an engineering achievement with obvious rewards. Oh, listen to that. She sounds a treat, doesn't she? Hey. <sighs> Bit of a whistle. Oh. Bit of wheel spin, I thought, though, maybe. Oh. Hey, where do we start, though? Where do we start? The list of jobs is long. 5164's firebox needs repairing. Her wheels are out of balance and even the train tracks need relaying. If it can all be made to work, then Guy will get the chance to drive her. Don't hold him on the Renovating it all will mean mastering the skills of the people who were considered the best engineers in the world. Just look at him, hey? Fitters and boilersmiths. Yeah, but what a trade. Yeah, that's what people forget, don't they? People only know the Stevensons and the Brunels of, of the time, don't they? No one knows about the grafters of the day. Yeah. These are the fellows who want to pay tribute to, really. But first, this five-month renovation must begin with the basics. Engine cleaning. Someone's going to get wet here, aren't they? <laughs> Seven Valley Boilersmith Duncan Ballard hoses out the loco once a year to get rid of all the gunge that accumulates in the boiler. Once clean, it can be properly inspected for signs of fatigue. It's no different to, to a kettle in a household, is it? You get scale and then you have to descale them. You can wiggle it around a bit if you want to have a wiggle. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Victorian engine cleaners were a motley crew of teenagers, but they worked hard. You know, your train would come in at, whatever, 6 o'clock at night, and they'd have to get that ready for it going out in the morning, so, you know, they'd do a 12-hour you know, shift through the night, and, um, you know, they'd find them in the morning frozen to the train. Frozen. We, we don't know a bomb. You don't, do you? I definitely don't. Hey? Well, what's the plan? Well, we're going to have to see doing? if you washed it out properly now. Right. All right. It was the responsibility of the boilersmith then to check inside the loco yeah. for corrosion. If you can 
manipulate your mirror. You should be able to tell me if there's any blockages down there at all. Oh, I see, I see. That was like the day it was put in. But not everything can be observed through an inspection hole with a paraffin flame. I had to be in there. I had to be in the firebox. Are we calling it the firebox, Monkey? It is the firebox, yes. That's my man, Monkey. He knows the score. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go in there and meet... Now, what are we calling it? It's not an inspection hammer. What are we calling it? It's a stay-testing hammer. A stay-testing hammer. So I'm going to go in the firebox with my stay-testing hammer, and then... Monkey's Bash all the stays. I'm going to do what? Bash all the stays. Bash all the stays. It's one. quite simple, really. <laughs> Monkey will show me the way. <laughs> She's going to be a bit cosy in there. Hey. <laughs> Feet first. Feet first. Not too much of a drop. Yeah? That's it. Keep going. Oh, my God. And then just shove yourself in. That's it. All oh, right. Oh, God, I. Room in there, man. I don't know if many are thinking our. Oh, wow. You know, our steam locomotive works. And I suppose there is no better way to explain it than, um, than being in a steam locomotive firebox. It's not the biggest of places, is it, Monkey? No. But it's, um, there is no better place to explain it. So, yeah, it's, it's fairly. It, I don't know if it's simple, it's, it's, it, 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 it is what it is, look, here, you see the floor, um, that's full of coal, with a blazing fire on it, creating loads and loads and loads of heat. Alright, a massive fire, but it, it's a massive fire that'll take, what, sort of three or four hours to get going? Yep. That's how much heat we want, we, we want, you're not going to do it in a tea break, we do want a massive amount of heat. And, um, yeah, this creates a lot of heat, the heat deflects off here, off this brick wall here, you see, fire bricks are those, monkey. What do you call them? Uh, it's brick arch. Brick arch. So the heat then is deflected back into these tubes. You see these tubes here? Now what's happening there is on the outside of these tubes we've got water, right? The heat from the fire is going down the centre of those tubes. It's getting drawn down there from the chimney. Heating the water up, water turns to steam, goes to the pistons, powers the train. You see, quite sort of simple, sort of simple. The first lot of steam trains only had the one tube, but then they learned to get a more efficient steam train, we wanted more tubes. And that's what you've got here. Look, you can see there, there must be, I mean, I can't count a monkey, there must be a hundred odd tubes there. A couple of hundred. Yeah, a yeah. couple of hundred maybe. And more heated tubes is obviously more surface area to pass the heat from the fire to the water. As simple as that. 51. Wow. I honestly never knew that. That's, uh, I mean, we learned a little bit about how, the how in the, in the Dibna in the yeah. Dibna, um, journey but never up close and personal like that yeah yeah like this is like i wish this was in my curriculum of high school yeah god yeah. man yeah I, I mean the part that freaked me out the most is being someone that's over the age of 30 and still you know getting down there on the ground yeah like Maybe I'm just out of shape, but I'm like, there's no way I'm getting back up. Yeah, there's no way. That is a one-time thing. Yeah. Oh, my I, goodness. Like, I make noises getting up already. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let alone trying to squeeze into um, a train box. Yeah, goodness. Yeah, fire box. My God. But then again, Guy Martin, he's a dude, works with his hands all the time. He's very active. So, yeah. of course, Guy Martin would be all right with that. Yeah. 164th inspection continues with an important check for broken rivets. Steam pressure of 200 pounds per square inch turns any weak spot into a potential explosion. Ooh. Right, you hear the difference? Yeah. That's the broken one. The last one? Yeah. yeah. It's got more of a dull foot yeah. to it, so yeah, that's broken. You're allowed two broken stays in a box. All right, right. So if you've got any more than two, dead engine you fail it and you replace the stays five problem rivets were found they may be small but if they're not replaced 5164 will never be allowed to move again mm. lots of learning that sort of steadied me a bit really i think the audience is like dogs it's right isn't it? you can't teach them all i mean i'm not even that old am i i'm not 30 yet but i'm struggling to take all this information on so we'll give it we'll give you know Maybe a pint or two tonight. I think I'll just give it a bit more opportunity to sink in. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of learning to do. But we're all right. We're here for a day or two. We'll, you know, we'll be all right. It's 
this guy has the best attitude about yeah. it. It's like, uh, we have a lot of learn to do. I'll just go home, have a have a pint or two, and get ready to learn tomorrow. That's that's the way to do it. That's, that's the, the way, way to do it, do it. man. That's the yeah. way to do it. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. The challenge to get steam locomotive 5164 rolling again is entering its second month. All right. Oh, shoot. The preliminary washout and inspection revealed the need for new rivets in the boiler. And now that that's been passed fit, the major engineering can begin. Not least with the rails the loco will hopefully run on. And that means replicating the skills of the hardest workers of them all. The people who laid 7,000 miles of track by hand. The navvies. We've got this picture here in Lime Street in Liverpool. That looks a hive of activity. There's not a lot of posing going on. There's a lot of grafting going on. Though. Yeah, and the next picture we've got here, this is the brick-making machine. I mean, it does look, the machine does look like something that's come out of the ark. And these fellas here, I wouldn't want to fall out with any of them. Yeah, they, they won't be long starting a fight, I don't think. And these were the grafters. These were the grafters. These are the ones we need to show some respect. No, these boys are never mentioned, are they? I was just learning earlier. Three people a day were getting killed. Three people wow. a day. Wow. What's going on now? No one wants, you know, no one wants anyone to respect anyone that's a grafter that gets their hands mucky for a living. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's all about. Yeah, that's what built this country, really. And what's, what's going on now? People leave school and they want to become famous. You know, they don't want to be, you know, want to be grafters, do they? they want to go and. I don't know, I'm going to go on X Factor, I'm going to go on Big Brother or something. So, you know, no one wants to go and do this anymore. I do. You know, I like it. I just like the whole, you know, they don't get the job satisfaction at the end of the day. I'm sure these boys did. Obviously, their faces aren't saying it there, are they? <laughs> but the job satisfaction, look what they've done. You know, we're still looking at it now, aren't we? You know, it's left the 200 years on. <laughs> and it hasn't gotten any better in the past 10 years after this was made. You know, no. this was made 2012 and 2023 and... <laughs> Love to hear what he has to say about TikTok. Yeah. God, that's great. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there's a uh, train uh, restoration TikTok, but it's probably not <laughs> yeah. as big as others' uh, niches, you know? No. <laughs> Today, the modern-day equivalent, the Seven Valley Track Gang, have a new recruit. All right. Sorry, sorry I'm late. The navvies, or navigators, were notorious. <laughs> as famous for their hard drinking as their hard work. Nice. When, you know, when the railway building was at its biggest, there was 250,000 navvies building the railways. That's, that's a lot, is that? That's more than the army and the navy put together. 250,000, eh? You wouldn't go in a phone box, would you? What you can see is the gang are going to relay some track to remove a hump. What will happen oh. on the track is you've got it low as the train comes along. It will, it will, it will do that effect. And it's what we call oh, twist. Yeah. The track needs levelling, which means relaying the six constituent parts of a railway. Each length of raw time bullhead rail is kept upright by sitting in chairs and is fastened tight by wedges called keys. A fish plate holds the lengths together with a small gap to allow for expansion in hot weather. I'm not messing with you, boys. Everything is bolted to oak sleepers, which keep the rails the correct width apart. And it all sits on granite ballast, which provides stability and drainage. The Nav has laid this simple infrastructure to every corner of the country, a system that essentially remains the same today. Wow. They were shoveling 20 ton a day. 20 ton a day, that's some going, is that? You've got to look at the lifestyle as well. That wouldn't have helped the job. Oh, there'd be... What are they end? They were on two pound of beef, two loaves of bread, and 10 pints of, 10 pints of beer. What? Hey, that's not the perfect... It's not an athlete's diet, is it? <laughs> hey, and this was athlete's work that they were doing on 10 pints. Man, they wouldn't feel the cold, would they? They're right. <laughs> <laughs> 10 pints. Well, well, I tell you, man, um, on my food channel, there's a uh, my my millionaire breakfast sandwich. It has a lot of uh, meat, calories, protein, 
uh, you know, and you see me drinking a lot of beer on here. So there you go. I guess I'm a superhuman athlete. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm ready to lay down some railroad track. Hell yeah, man. Oh, my God. Each length of rail weighs one ton. Well, the only what? <laughs> this back-breaking work was relatively well paid. Navis could earn 25 shillings a week, 50% more than lowly engine cleaners. Oh, wow. Paul, oh, you was grafting for it, weren't you? Prop, proper grafting. Red face tights, is that what we're going for? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's a technical term, red face tights. Yeah, when you face it, when you, that's tight enough. <laughs> you want to give him a, a chat, boss, so you're in. What do you think? Do you really think I'm the type you said? Oh, no. go on. Uh, go on, it's my first time on the job. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think they'll come loose in, or he will. No, I don't think they will, no. Oh, a bit there. Oh, I'm slacking. Train on. Train on. Hang on. Die, off the track. Stop work. No, Hold off for working to it. The instruction is standing. As soon as you hear that. As soon as you hear it, get off. You get off. Sharpish. Yes. That'll not happen again, young man. Because what happens if you trip, you've got to get yourself up from that and people can trip. So you move straight away. Yeah. Right. Noted for future. Sorry. Well, it's about right, isn't it? Whenever I go on a train going past, then you all see the rail workers. I mean, thinking, oh, that looks like a cushy number. I can see now you have got to get off the track, can't you? Yes. It does like a, look like a, when you sat on the train, it does look like a bit of a spectator sport, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, can I get cracking again? Yeah. Yeah. The bosses didn't give a monkeys about health and safety and all that sort of caper. They didn't give a monkeys how many folks were killed. As long as the railway was built, it, there was no, you know, we just didn't care. Just get that, get it built, get it built sharpish. So really, the navvies, they, they had the same sort of, you know, they didn't give a monkeys. Didn't give a monkeys, you know, they didn't know if it was going to, they didn't know if it was going to be there come the end of the week, so that's it. You know, treat every day as the last, get in the pub and let's, let's make the most of it. And I reckon lock your daughters up. I reckon that's the way it was when the navvies was in town. Oh, wait, there's going to be some scrapping and lock your daughters up. Yeah, they call it, um, they call it a randy. The navvies would go on a randy. I think they got, they got fairly messy, fairly messy. Well, like, and, you know, if, wherever the navvies was coming into town to do that section of railway, all the police, all the, the police leave was cancelled. <laughs> Nevertheless, the navvies' work rate remained unsurpassed. And the Europeans could recognise this, and so what they'd do, um, <clears throat> okay. you know, they'd try and um, poach the British navvies, pay them twice as much, get them over their grafting. They'd, twi they'd, you know, they'd do twice as much track as what the, the European navvies would. That's proper British, isn't it? Proper. Grafters, just, you know, scream, shout and scream about it, just got on with it. So, well, yeah, so I best get on with it, aren't I? Let's talk him. Are we done? Yeah. Best go see if Keith's happy. What do you reckon? <laughs> hey, is he never happy? You're yeah, laughing. There he is over there. Keith, what are we looking like, do you think? For the smoothest train ride, the rails had to be laid to the millimetre. Peer through the slot in one sighting board, and if the white triangles on the far board just touch the top of the middle board, then you know that that stretch of rail is bump free. Yeah, well, spot on. Wow. The track is finished, ready for 5164. Atticus Finch, out of To Kill a Mockingbird, never judge a man until you have walked a mile in his shoes. I think, what a saying. What a saying that is. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know if I've walked a mile in a, in a navvy's shoes, but I've, you know, I've, I've, I've been a yard or two, haven't I? And, um, yeah, not easy. Not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Mad respect to Guy, man. He, he got... I mean, this is probably going to be a theme of this series, is he's going to get down in the trenches with these guys yeah. and, you know, get into the nitty gritty of it all. It's just so much respect, man. Just so yeah. much respect for that dude because he didn't need to, but he's doing yeah. it. Yeah. And that's awesome. And he's, it was basically the tackle box of that group yeah. right there. Yeah. 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 And he's, he probably hasn't been a tackle box for a long time. Right. You right. know, he is the pro when it comes to his realm, mm -hmm. but he still is remaining humble enough to take the the what is it the wisdom of the elders in the profession yeah yeah 100% and it seems from what 
the narrator was describing these guys and what guy was saying about them is they were a rowdy bunch, you know, you know, they're coming to town, lock your daughters up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh my God, their diet consists of two pounds of meat and 10 pints of beer a day. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, they are. They are no joke. But at the same time, you know, dying at the rate of three people per day. Jesus. You got to live life because that could be you tomorrow. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right today. 5164 remains laid up in the Seven Valley Shed. A nut and bolt overhaul is a painstaking process. But if everything can be made to work, Guy will get to try the best railway job of all. If everything goes to plan, they're going to let me loose. <laughs> you know, I am going to I am going to become a trained driver. A trained not like, like these fellas here. You need your wits about you and you need to be you need to be clever. You need to be proper switched on. It is the pinnacle of the, of the train world. I'm going to need one thing, though. Well, I'm going to need a lot of things, but the main thing I'm going to need... You can't see it on any of them. But there was, there was one thing these boys all needed. The train driver needed a watch. He needed a watch. Without a watch, the drivers couldn't stick to a timetable. At best, that meant delays. At worst, it meant head-on collisions. Oh, yeah. So the whole country ran to a standard called railway time and the pocket watch became a powerful badge of rank. What's your head, to find out more means a visit to timepiece historian Rob James. All right, Rob. Guy can borrow this 100-year-old engine driver's watch wow. if he can repair it first. Nice. Oh, my God. Wow. It's gaining time, so we'll need okay, extra so. weights added to these tiny screws to slow the mechanism down. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't think I've got a screwdriver to fit them. Don't you see worry. the size of them? You can't really go in there with your hands. You know, it's not just the muck on my hands, but the sweat on them corrodes everything. You know, you have to, you know, let's see the size of the screwdrivers. You've just got to be as careful as careful because, you know, something as old as this, and it takes a second just to destroy them. Yeah. I am a bit on edge. And you think, well, you know, I just, you know, weight it down a bit, just, you know, I'll stick a washer or two on it. You see the size of these washers, eh? Wow. The size of the tiny, tiny washers. A watchmaker's sliding pin vise is a world away from a truck mechanic's spanner. Nice and gentle. You have to remind myself to breathe. <laughs> My case doing very well, very well. Right, now, we've got to put it back together. You wouldn't have thought such a tiny amount of weight made such a big difference. You know, we put these tiny, tiny washers on, what must have been, what was it? Half a thou. No, not even half, not even that. And, you know, two of those made a difference to ten minutes, and then we fine-tuned it a bit with a few other bits and bobs, and the wish you go, she's keeping good time now, so, yeah, brilliant. Tell you what, let's clean the door, because you, you have got slightly oily marks on the old dial. I'm sorry. His fingers. My granddad, if I tell you what, mate, he'd have you in the sink with a big scrubbing brush. Who would, your own boy? I oh, know. <laughs> In the early 19th century, a watch that kept time was next to useless because every area of Britain was running to a slightly different time. Oh. Can you just imagine how complicated that was? Can you imagine that? Oh, my God. How complicated that was? Could you say it was farcical? I don't know. Would you, would you use a word? I wouldn't really use a word like that. What was it? What word would you use? Very impractical. Very, very impractical. GWR was the company that decided to do something about it. So, Great Western Railways, 1840, says, right, when it's 12 o'clock at Greenwich, Greenwich Mean Time, GMT, the famous GMT, when it's 12 o'clock there, it's 12 o'clock everywhere in the country. And this is what will happen. Um, so, you know, great idea, that was a great idea. But it took, it took 40 years for that to catch on. It was crackers, isn't it? Crackers. Wow. Right, well, I think you've done remarkably well there. Um, what was you expecting me to do? Was you well, expecting me to break something? I'll, well, I'll either break something or, or shoot something out your tweezers. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I was expecting you to do. It survived 100 years, it'll survive you. I think that's the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Right, <coughs> job sorted. Hey, she's only small, but she changed the world, didn't she? Sounds a treat. Sounds a treat. Give that here. Give that here. Hey, you hear that in there? Hey, you hear it? It sounds a treat, doesn't it? That made me nervous. Dude. <laughs> Just how how meticulous that was. You can't get your sweat on it. You can't get your fingerprints on it. Yeah, I couldn't do it. 
that is absolutely insane that these watches 100 years ago were made in basically sterile lab conditions. Yeah. Like, how do you manufacture a screwdriver that effing small? Like, it's how impossible. do you get the tools that small to do stuff that small? Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that they must have been really expensive at the time to hell yeah to buy, and were probably only used by you know people who worked on the railroad. You yep. know, I bet I bet that watch is more than twenty thousand dollars right now. Right, like, it was. It was probably the iPhone of its day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, it reminded me of when I added some RAM to my laptop here. And, you know, I had to have like its gloves on. I had to find the right exact place. Like I get a screwdriver small enough to take the back out of this. Yeah. Like it's definitely a little lower risk than making one of those watches but still a still. bit meticulous yep yeah crazy so, and it's interesting great western railways was the one that was trying to get everybody on the same time but it's 12 o'clock here it's 12 o'clock everywhere i mean that's a, it's, it's a smart way to do it yeah it's a smart way to do it because you're you're working with the risk is is derailment and deaths yeah, and a a full stop of a of a of a railroad. Yeah, and yeah. no one could afford that. So yeah, not then. That was the transportation of the time. So that's that was like, yeah, I, that's amazing. I didn't know that. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah, absolutely crazy. I yeah, wonder that's... if we had some. I wonder if we if we had something similar, but probably not, because we didn't have that much infrastructure and that many. I would say we didn't have that many trains. We had probably one that went way out, one that came way in. We had long runs, probably of. Uh, um, there were definitely more trains in the 1800s than there were today, at least yeah. for. Um, I mean, because there was no ho interstate highways, no tractor trailer yeah. trucks, no planes, so that was the transportation. Yeah. So, I don't know, but. I was probably asleep that day in history class. Me too, probably, dude. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Back at the train yard, the five-month loco project continues. The safety valve is the next thing to be replaced. Understandably worn out after 5164's hard life. Just reading through the logbook. Logbook. Service book. You know, like you get your car, you buy a car, don't you? That's what, that's what this is. We should do some work. 811,367 miles. Wow. The records also show that 5164 was condemned in 1963. She then sat in a train graveyard for 10 years. Wow. But a group of enthusiasts stepped in to rescue her. A consortium of blocks bought her and spent six years doing her up. And, um, yeah, she's been down there at... Um, Seven Valley since 79. The overhaul is vital to get her working properly again. And the next task is a dirty one. Oh, dear. About to get dirty. I can't go, mate. You can't see out. Are you in there, monkey? Yeah. <laughs> right, we're tube cleaning. <laughs> basically means stick an airline down the tube. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Turn it on and then get covered in soot, coal dust, you name it. But the idea is keep the tubes clean so that the heat can go through them to boil the water. Yeah? That's it. You got it? Go on, monkey. Ready? Okay. On three. One, two, three. <laughs> Slapping shot blasted. What? A racket. All the smoke and the soot of the day coming flying at you. <coughs> I can't see a bloody thing now. <laughs> I can't tell you what your next one is because I can't bloody see it. <coughs> How long have you been doing this for, Monkey? Nearly a week. 5164 is halfway through its overhaul. Wow. The heart of the loco, its boiler, has been repaired. 
and a whole section of track on which the train will run has been levelled. Now, in the workshop, Guy and the team are busy fabricating new parts for the engine. I do genuinely get more nervous sat machining stuff than sat on a, sat on a start line somewhere going to race. I do. I do. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's line boring down there, but he's sat reading his book. You know, fair play. Fair play. It's going to be a week or two before I get that confidence, isn't it? <laughs> the next. This is a man that did the Isle of Man TT race and yeah. got messed up from that in a wreck <sighs> so and when he says that he's nervous about that he means it yeah oh my god it's like this man's not scared of anything except it's like okay i'm scared of that too no yeah. i don't even know what it is but i'm scared of it if he if he's scared of it i'm effing scared of it yeah yeah it, like him and fred dibna when they say they're scared of something you better watch the f yep. out yeah key stage of this five-month project means making the indispensable tool that will feed the loco up to two tons of coal an hour a shovel right. it won't be forged from normal iron instead it will be hand beaten from purer wrought iron and... mike dunville one of the country's few remaining blacksmiths is going to show guy how put it in the fire don't forget that is hot yes Here. she's yeah yeah, no bother. You think? Happy enough? Yeah. It takes just a few seconds to heat the metal to a thousand degrees, the temperature at which it can be worked without damaging its internal structure. Yeah. Okay. A bit more. A bit more. Okay, that's fine. Wrought iron has less carbon than cast iron, and so is much more malleable. Assuming you hit it correctly, of course. Right, OK. OK. Ah, it's just, ah, it's, yeah. And it, not put it on there to flatten can, it off. Can I just ask you yeah, a yeah, technical what? question? Go on. What's, what's that for? I don't know. That's what, what you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Once looped over, it's time to fuse the metal together to complete the handle. Yeah. It's called yeah. the fire weld. Yeah. And it's as hard as blacksmithing gets. Even experienced smiths today do fire welds and they don't always work out. Is that right? Yeah. The metal is superheated to 1400 degrees, so the surface starts to melt and can be melded together with some well judged hits. It's like swatting a fly. Is it? Yeah, a bit like what you do. <laughs> oh, well, should anyway. be all right then. <laughs> 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 swatting a fly. I've never had it explained like that, you cheeky vulgar. <laughs> It's a critical moment. Right. Every time the bar is heated, some metal is lost. If it's not hit in the exact correct spot, then it will be too weak to use. What do you think? Was that any good? Too early to say, but it's a good start. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> right, you can hit it a bit harder now. Right, turn it slightly on the side. Lovely stuff. I don't know whether it's the pupil or the teacher, but... Oh, I'm pointing down to the teacher, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lost, we've lost the shape of the bloody handle, oh, look. The loop has to be made round again. OK. A tough test of the fire world's strength. Don't speak too soon. Happy enough? Yeah? Oh, sorry. That's better, isn't it? Better. The stem has gone thin, but... The fire well's held. That's the only criticism. You've done a grand job there. Happy enough? Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Bye, yeah. <laughs> Bye, yeah, you've got it. While the fire world cools, it's time to make the blade of the shovel. <laughs> so, in other words, it's good enough for who it's for. Yeah, I love that. That's such a whatever compliment. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it did good for for you. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's do this. <laughs> like, it's like after the cameras are off, like, get out of my shop. Here's the real one. I made it yeah. while you were practicing. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, A for effort, I guess. Oh, 100%, dude. Hey, like, I couldn't do it. You yeah. Know, and that's it, that's one of these things that's it's not I'm never going to criticize anyone actually getting out there and doing the damn thing. Oh yeah. You know, Cuz yeah, it's me neither. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. You know? Oh my god, my dumbass would probably grab the thing with my bare hands. It's just <laughs> orange. 
you know, nothing orange has ever hurt me. <laughs> what, what, what's that reminding you of? What you, specific moment? You. Okay, so uh. we've told this on this channel before, but if you're new here, what happened was I was helping Daniel on a a, a deck project in January of 2023, and yep. uh. To keep warm during those times, he would burn old wood in a fire pit around the place. And one morning, I I guess I just hadn't had enough coffee or monster energy or yeah. whatever. And I was trying to, you know, stoke that fire. And I, I had a glove on at the time, thank God. And I just stuck the hand into the, the, the ashes. smoldered ashes. And like, what? Oh, because I said, check to see if the fire's hot. Yeah, because you know that means you know we'd have to ignite stuff. But no, for the like for the this is not a one and done fire. This fire had been cooking for weeks. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I was like, check to see if the fire is hot. You do that by putting a piece of wood in. It catches good. If not, it's not hot. He just puts his hand in. I'm like, <laughs> hey, bro. Like the like I am not I'm one I'm one for non OSHA violations, but that was like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Uh, see, could have been did, so bad. It could have been, but both my hands are still here. The gloves are fine. Oh my god. Everything dude. was fine. Jesus. <laughs> uh. A case of heating, hammering, and shaping a sheet of wrought iron. Stage three is flattening the end of the handle so that it can be cut with a treadle hammer. Okay. Straight in the groove, that. Whoop, voila. Okay, what we're looking like? It's like the Grand Canyon, that. Once cut, the ends are split okay. wider so that they can be hole punched ready for riveting. Okay. All right. When the handle has been fastened to the blade, all that's left to do is add a decorative trademark. Boy, yuck. <laughs> You've got that that's, off to a tee. That's a grand shovel. Guy. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I'm happy. You would never have thought that's come out a bit of flat, would you? Got the rivets, riveted them over. Oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spot on. You want it around the back of the head, and it's not going to fall over in a breeze, is it? No, she's definitely not not, not light. I think it'll it'll withstand a nuclear holocaust, that I reckon. Hey? Yes, Bob. Well impressed. Thank you very much, Bob. Well, well, you're welcome. It's been a pleasure. It's a crucial tool to help get 5164 running again. Back at the train yard, the volunteer team continue with the challenge of returning the loco to action. Ah, well, as you can see, the train's coming on a treat. You know, a lot of work to do yet, but we've not quite broken the back yet, but she's coming. But there's a bit more to the railway than just the, than just the train. You know, we're going to need a station. Ah, uh, yeah. Good cat. 19th century stations were architectural wonders. They were designed to be beautiful, elevating the town standing in the eyes of the new visitors brought in by the railways. Victorian pride demanded that the stations were kept in immaculate condition, so the country's 50,000 porters were always kept busy. Their boss, the station master, was without doubt the most important person in the whole system. And as historian Peter Salverson explains, he was also the most respected man in the town. He was as important, if, if not more important, than the local vicar and the local GP. Wow. Mm. Everybody liked to be on the right side of the station master, even the local gentry. So during these railway fault then, they saw themselves as up there, really? They saw themselves as the aristocrats of the working class, and they were highly cultured, highly read. They were literate. You couldn't get a job on the railway unless you had basic literary skills to start off with. One of the things that would happen at smaller stations as well as larger stations was that they'd have what they called a mutual improvement class. It was part of the, the Victorian ethos of self-improvement but it was mostly drivers and firemen and the, the the cleaners yes who would meet up outside hours so it was outside the working day you wouldn't get paid for it and you'd 
get lectures very often from other drivers. You know, it was a really good example of self-education by working people. <laughs> right, we said about these here station masters being being the pillar of the community, I suppose. We've got our man here, Bill Mead. A tidy old boy. West Sussex is from. Yeah, he's got a bit of a pocket watch on. Bit of a rag there. You see, there's no running water back then. No running water, you see. So they'd had that to wash their hands on before they went before they went back in the station there. Good old boy. Yeah, pillar of the community. I suppose, how well, could you say he's got a fag on? You see. I don't know. Maybe it won't go down so well. <laughs> It's interesting that the the station master it makes sense that the station master is the pillar of the community, the yeah. the the guy that knows everything and ever about everybody, and yeah. knows more than you do. Well, he was the one that was responsible for how the town looked from the the new the the newcomers. Yeah. So. Yeah. He is essentially managing the face of the community. Basically, yeah. So I would say he's on par with like a mayor. Yeah. Or a, a, a something like that. Like maybe on that level. Yeah, up there with the mayor for so sure. He, so he was like the higher. He is like the glass ceiling middle middle working class. Right. Yeah. As yeah. high as he could go. And that's yeah. It. It's almost like, you know, like a bartender that of a very popular bar or like a waiter, a waitress at a local diner, maybe something like that, but more important than that. Like, like a know. supervisor, supervisor, like, like a, or a, or a manager, not, not getting into the C's, not getting yeah. into like the CEO, CFO. You're just top of your, your ladder is management or supervisor. Yeah. Supervisor? yeah. Is that a word? Supervisory position. It is. It is now. But yeah, had had enough street smarts and book smarts that you respected the guy. Yep. Got it. It's one last issue to solve on 5164, and it's the biggest job of all. One of its eight wheels wobbles, but nobody knows why. The axle needs pushing out into the open for an inspection by Seven Valley manager Ian Walker. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm slacking. I keep talking and drinking tea, don't I? While it's moving, push, 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 push. Can you manage or do you need a hand? It'll start going easy in a minute when the balance weight goes over the top. Railway workers endured hard labor and tough discipline. In 1841 alone, the Great Western thought nothing of sacking 10% of its workforce for not pulling its weight. The idea now, uh, making the most of the moment. That's it. Steady as you go, steady, 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 steady. Oh, man, she was heavy. That's two tons. Is it heavy? Is it heavy? <laughs> two tons, that? God. <laughs> Sorry, the momentum. Momentum is your friend. <sighs> now the axle needs to be precisely measured to see if it's still round. That is a, that is a big micrometer. <laughs> so do you want to have a go at measuring if you measure there and there and see yes. what the difference is? Yeah, no problem. A micrometer is far more accurate than an ordinary gauge. Feel it till it's just, just sort of kissing. It can measure to thousandths of an inch, and every Victorian engineer was expected to know how to use it. Wow. This has to be right, otherwise you start getting lots of vibrations in the engine, you start getting bearings running warm. It's like his motorbike, if it's not right, it'll break. It won't do the job. We're on 750 there and we're on 7.45 there. So that means we've got a variation of 5,000. Well, that is note. 5,000, did we compare, what did we compare that to in Imperial? 5,000 was 0.2 of a millimetre. 0.2 of a millimetre, hey? You know, like a motorbike valve clearance would be 0.2 of a millimetre. And we're, you know, you're machining train axles to that. Then it would have been common. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in what way? It's heavy engineering. This is how everything was in those days. Yes. You know, today it's all smaller bits of kit and it's all just yeah. component exchange. You know, they wouldn't do this on modern trains. Oh, no, you'd scrap it, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd scrap it. Scrap it and then get, and get a new one. It is astonishing accuracy. 
and the sort of precision machining that these days is left to robots. Would you have called them artisans, I suppose? I suppose you could go as far as that. I mean, I don't really know. I wouldn't have been confident enough to use that word artisans, but they're just proper, aren't they? Mm. Proper engineer, that's proper, that. Oh, ah, yeah, brilliant, Stephen. Yeah, I'm sure there was, you know, obviously, there was one of there was the boys, really. I mean, there was ones coming up with this, all these fancy ideas of dual acting pistons and heater tubes and all that fair play, oh, boys. But they want the boys machining to if I say, was there? Was there? Hey, did you see him? I didn't see him. Stevenson stood next to a lathe. That five thou of wear means the axle is as good as the day fabricators first made it wow. nearly 100 years ago. In the hallowed Swindon works. Well, the ultimate train factory was in Swindon. 1851, there were 2,000 people working there, knocking out one train a week. I mean, that's some going I mean, lads Whoa. here, you know, it's taking five years to restore one. But then boys there, 2,000 of them, turning out one, one train a week. Wow. That's some going. That's some hard work, man. Holy shit. That is effing like light year speed like you are flying through that mm -hmm. oh my god when men were men holy shit there was no one there were no chairs in that place mm -mm. there were no one had time to sit they just did wow yeah it's work 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 12 15 hour days mm. no wonder their uh go-to was uh, you know, two pounds of meat and ten pints of beer. Yeah, it's like fair enough, dude. Fair yeah. enough, you earned it. Damn. And they only had, and they only had one thing on their mind when they got off work, and that's why you gotta lock up your daughters. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all these lads here, look, they've all got hands the size of shovels. There's no fatties in there. I'm just looking using exactly the same skills and methods has let the team trace 5164's wobble to this crank pin. Which is the end of the con rod, the connecting rod. Just joins the two wheels together. You know, that turns the, the linear movement into rotary movement, you know, a bit like that. You see what I mean? It needs a new perfectly round collar or bearing to be cast so it runs true. And to do that today means using the old industrial revolution technique of white metalling. 17-year-old apprentice Mark Drinkwater makes sure it's done in the traditional way. Yeah, a little bit more propane. You'll need to put some heat, just concentrate it on the bung as well at some. All right. Get some good bit of heat. For what, for what reason? Um, if you get that quite hot, then it'll be easier to take apart because the bearing won't drink on to it. Ah, right, right. You know a lot to say you're only 17. Hey, you're into this, hey? White metal is a special hard wearing but low friction blend, first concocted in the 1830s. That's the white metal there, then. Yeah, it's right. a composite of tin, a little yeah. bit of copper, a little bit of lead, and a little bit of antimony. Antimony? Yeah. What's that? Some <laughs> form of metal. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Just carefully pour it into there. Get yeah. it three quarters full or so. Just over just overflowing with that. Yeah, just, I'll shout when to stop. That'll take probably about 20 minutes to set. Right. The next stage needs a visit to the hydraulic press. Look at that. 22 year old fitter Will Marge helps Guy squeeze the newly cast piece into 5164's coupling rod. It takes 20 tons of force to ram the bearing in for a tight fit. I think we got there, Guy. To ensure everything spins smoothly, the inside of the bearing now needs to be machined to a mirror finish. It will require painstaking measurement and cutting. Removing just one millimeter too much metal will render the bearing useless. Oh my God. It's laborious but rewarding work. Well, you're the other same. You're into it. It's not a chore to come to work. If I could earn hundreds of thousands a year or do this, I still, still do, do this. It. You know, yeah. still not, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's time to cut the metal to those exacting standards of the Victorian engineers. Start the spindle moving. Pull that back. Yeah. You have to give it a bit of a bit of stick. Keep going. That's it. Yeah. And then just leave it to do it. That's it. But don't touch any of those. They're all set. Yeah. The process continues. Measuring. We're on 4.286. Oh, fine. 286. Oh. Now go on. Say that again. Cutting. 
He's pretty good. We'll have, we'll, yeah, we'll have him here. He can, <laughs> he can come back. <laughs> and calculating. You're right there, Guy. I'm just trying to work out where we are. Yeah. Time to see if Guy and Will's work measures up to the high standards of the 19th century. Right, the moment of truth, then. If this is too big, then, that's the same, the same all over again, all that white metalling yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. All that pressing again. How many hours do you reckon has gone into that? Must have been a day's work at least, didn't you? Yeah, I bet you're ten hours. Yeah, well, yeah. it's got to read four inches, 408 around there. Give or take, like Will said, give or take a thou or two. Four inches, 407 thou. That's pretty much cock on. Hey, Will, you're the man. <laughs> See, 22 year old. I don't know, mate, 22 year olds that could do that. <laughs> hey, grand job. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> It's a small but vital piece that should help 5164's wheels turn once again. Nice. I hope Mark getting covered in oil vats. I've got the heavy end again. Lift the rod up. And its newly machined surface fits on the crank pin. Bit back. Oh, there's back end. Do you go and slide the. Perfectly. That's it. Look at that. Dude. That's that's impressive. Crap. The whole process from beginning to end. And the fact that it's done by 17-year-olds, 22-year-olds, that's impressive as hell. That's awesome because it the means it it means it'll live on. Yeah. Like, you know, granted, this was 2012. Yeah, 2012. So yeah. Wow. So they're just now 30 something. Yeah. That's they're, crazy. they're our age. Yeah. Ish. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. Hell That's yeah. That's great. That's great. Like to have a pint with them. Fuck yeah, man. Mm -hmm. After five months, the time has come for Guy to see if 5164 will work. Its firebox and boiler were saved, and it had a top to bottom overhaul of vital parts like its safety valve and wheel bearings. It's even had a new whistle. Mm. But only if it's all been done correctly will Guy get to try the job that was the traditional reward for 20 years' work on the railways. Train driver. Yeah. It's just, he's all a bit ex excited, isn't he? This is the, the finishing touches, I suppose. She might be quite chuffed on polishing her bits. You think? Eh? First, the tank is filled. Ready? Yeah, go on. 1,500 gallon of water. So we're going to use that all day today. Uh, we'll use that 1,500 gallon today. We'll have to fill up again. We will have to fill up yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the thirsty bugger then. It will take a ton of coal to turn it all to steam. As Guy's inaugural journey draws ever closer, he attaches the carriages. That was a bit of weight in that bugger, isn't there? And then it's time for the most important job. Right, we'll see how the shovel performs, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's on the heavy side. <laughs> he's heavy without any coal on it. But yeah, it's all right. I mean, she's got a good, um, what do we say, flare on the side. It's holding yeah. its coal well. Yeah. Nice yeah. bit of riveting there as well. Oh, it is, oh, yeah. And driving it, I mean, there's no steering wheel out, is it? No, no, no steering wheel. We so just what's, have, the what's the driver do? We then? just have forwards and backwards. Yeah. Uh, with cutoffs, which is basically like the gears in the car. Yes. And then regulate the handle. That's a throttle pedal, is it? That makes it go. Regulator handle. Right. And then this is the brake, so that makes right. it stop. We shouldn't really need much brake though today, should we? Are we all right, mate? Oh, yeah. Knocking on half one, we'll get cracking. Hey. Okay. All right. <laughs> The moment of truth. The regulator is engaged. Whoa. Not that far, not that far. All right. That was a bit keen with the throttle, was it? <laughs> Too much throttle shoots lumps of flaming coal into the air. That's <laughs> fire going up the chimney. Stop it, stop it. We're all right, but we're all right, but fresh. That was a bit keen with the throttle, was it? Oh, wow. Oh, man, that's a melty 
Until he learns to use his, his gear a bit more better, I don't think he's going to be his pal too much. He's, uh... We have two now. Go, go watch the road, otherwise we don't crash it. <laughs> when you see an SW, you've got to sound the whistle. That's for crossing normally. What's that mean, SW? Sound whistle. Oh, is that right? Oh, God, that's him <laughs> With all the stuff, you've got to keep on top of your brake pressure. You no know, vacuum brakes, you need to keep on top of that. So if you ever need to stop sharp, you've got the vacuum there that you can do it. The throttle, keeping that, and then making sure it's not right close because you need to keep the lubricator going. Your valve position, keep that right, because if you're coasting, you want to be in that position so you don't wear any of the valve gear out. It's a lovely, complicated old job. Wow. Engine driver was the most coveted of the 801 different types of job on the wow. railways. But it was also the most demanding. Only the most intelligent made it. Now you're confident of stopping in the platform on your left-hand side in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, yeah. yeah. You'll be able to manage it. Yeah. Shoot your ejector again then. We're all right. A bit further. We're all right. Well, you're driving. You tell me. Ah, oh, there's a the platform. Do we need to be a bit further along? Well, you look out there and you tell me. Yeah, we're a bit out, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we're well done. <laughs> <laughs> One or two carriages. <laughs> Rear for a minute or two. Is it time for time for a bit of food? Well, I think I need some after that, to be honest with you. <laughs> My driving. <laughs> the traditional train yeah. driver's meal was a bacon and egg sandwich. Bloody hell. A coal shovel, once rinsed using the hot water slacking pipe, yeah, doubled as a frying pan. Oh, That's nice. clean enough for me. Yeah, all right then. Palm oil. That's what that is. Oh, okay, then that is that's proper palm oil. That's engine oil. It was used for cooking. And for your steam engines. It's all right. All right. Airs on the chest. Oh, look at this with shorter <laughs> notes. Well, let's say the train, train drivers of the day. I mean, yeah. we're not talking an eight hour shift, are we? Them boys, no. proper grafters. Well, I mean, if you did eight hours on the footplate, you've probably got two, three hours preparing it and two, three hours getting the fire back out of it. A 12 hour day, you know, would probably be the norm. Eat on the job, then. Yeah. I could tell you what, it's probably the first time I've ever fried an egg. I don't think that's no word of a lie. I can do. Chicken and pasta, and I can do beans on toast, but I don't think I've, I've never fried an egg. But here I have, have today. That's looking promising. Ah, there you go. It was only in there. I mean, you saw it on the camera. How long? It must have been 130 seconds, was it? I was caught away. Yeah, you guys are all jealous now, aren't you? Hey, you've been wanting one of these. Where are we going? Oh, that. Oh, that smells a treat. Look at that. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of slabs of red sugar in, down the hatch. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what. What was that fellow's name? Eston Blumenthal. You know what? You've got no help from me. I'll tell you what, that's not me. Come in. 51-64 is working perfectly. Oh, man. The wheel bearing is running true. The boiler's creating 24,000 pounds of driving force like when it was new, and even the rails are holding up. Now then, you all right? I didn't feel a bump. The trap repair must have been all right. <laughs> and as in the 19th century, the railways don't just benefit the country as a whole. Hey, we're getting much better than this, hey? But also the workers who built them. I don't get a martial over many things, but it was, it was, uh, it was... <coughs> I don't remember being a bit manly about it. It was quite touching, really, wasn't it? All the, all the time and effort that's gone into it. I mean, I've only done, I've only done a little bit. I've only done a bit. The boys have been flat out crafting, haven't they? You know, five months it's taken to get it back on the, back on the tracks again. Yeah, it was a very poignant moment, I suppose you could say. God, that last bit, <sighs> driving the train, and uh, I've said on the Fred Dibner one, that is a bucket list item for, for me. <laughs> that is and, awesome. Yeah, I mean, growing up next to a railroad track that Norfolk Southern would go down, like, I don't know, man. I, I probably would get emotional if someone let me drive a train like that. Dude, it would just be a, a dream come true. That would be and awesome. 
that's and I said that I had a few of our uh, dedicated members of the community uh, point me in the right direction with that, and I am eternally grateful and appreciative of y'all. Y'all know who you are. That's awesome, man. Oh man, what what a person to break down the people behind the way things work. Yeah, like, this is not a Divna shed light on the trade on the on the trade on the big the big forgotten trades that were dying off yeah uh, guy martin is doing the trade yeah he's getting into like, the, the nitty gritty of it awesome oh yeah. my god it's great man see yeah. like this is the real shit man this is the shit that i would normally just binge watch like this is so interesting to me Half the time, I know I'm just going to be speechless. There's yeah. nothing this. I'm just like trying to absorb all of it. Right. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. You and me both, man. Oh, my God. This is great. This yeah. is 50, 60, all, 70 yeah. thumbs up. All the thumbs yes. up, man. All this of is them. awesome. Man. man. I just hope that it goes up on YouTube. If at this yeah. point we're just recording the first episode, we have no idea if it's going to go up on YouTube or be a Patreon thing. I hope we get to see it, everybody for everybody yeah. and hope I don't have to cut it up and all yeah. that stuff but that's always our hope you know yeah yeah but, uh, in a perfect world just upload it like it is and go like that but anyway <sighs> anyway for YouTube if it goes up thanks for watching there's somewhere around subscribe and watch another video for Patreon if it just is a Patreon thing thanks for your patronage keeping the lights on ETS 21 yes Either way, wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck. Unplug and do something epic, guys. See y'all next time. Later. Fellas, we can be that mistake. Let's do this. <laughs>